Hi, it's Steve Parsons with Family Doves. Today we're going to talk about ear posting if you've opted to have your Doberman's ears cropped. The first important thing to remember is cropping is an artistic procedure as well as a veterinary procedure. So have it performed by a vet that does a good job specializing in ear cropping and has shown you pictures of his work that you like. Uh, and visit with the vet, make sure you're comfortable with the procedure and the aftercare. Once we get to the ear posting, it's also important to remember nutrition. You have to support the ear growth and the cartilage hardening with good nutrition. We feed ProPlan Performance Formula to all of our puppies and dogs here at the kennel, and we find it to be a complete diet that really helps with that. You can also give the puppy a Tums each day. Uh, 500 milligrams of calcium will help, that calci uh, help the cartilage harden if you're having trouble with the ears standing. You have to keep those ears clean and dry. If the ears get wet or if they get dirty, they can get infected and you could potentially lose the ear. The biggest problem with ear cropping is if you're committing to do the surgery, you have to be committed to the follow-up care and make sure you follow it through until those ears stand. There's nothing worse than a Doberman puppy that has cropped ears that fall over. Then we put them through the pain of the procedure and in the end have an ear that's uglier than a natural ear is to begin with. So keep the ears clean and dry. If you live in a humid climate or it's a humid time of year, I like to use Backer Rod, which is an insulation product you find at a Home Depot or Lowe's, for example. Uh, and it's a foam rod. I like to use this for a post when it's real humid or wet because it's less likely to retain moisture. But my preferred product to use for posting ears is a regular cardboard tampon. Now being a guy, I'm not an expert on tampons, but what I can tell you is this. They come in all kinds of applicators and there's only one kind that really works. This particular brand works very well for me because the product comes with two plain cardboard tubes, one that fits tightly inside the other. There's no texture, there's no dimpling on the top part of the applicator that changes its effectiveness for a post. And so this is the one brand I found that's consistently a good ear post. If we're going to use the tampon product, uh, it's a more rigid structure and it helps with that ear structure to help it stand. The foam rod is quite a flexible product and therefore we can use it for shaping an ear if we're trying to correct a problem in the ear. Uh, and when we wrap it tightly with tape, as I'll show you, it becomes more rigid and smaller in diameter for the younger puppy or a puppy with a smaller ear canal. When we use a cardboard tampon, what we're going to do is we're going to push the cardboard out the bottom about three quarters of an inch and then slide the applicator back out. The applicators are punched with a system of holes and when they line up it kind of locks itself in place. So we slide it back till it locks in place and the tape we use is a special tape called Zonus Tape. You can't find it at a regular store, you need to buy it from a medical supply store or a vet supply store, Zonus. Z-O-N-A-S and it's a fabric tape uh, that's sticky enough for the ear but not so sticky it pulls all the hair off it breathes to help the skin and it doesn't retain a lot of moisture but again if the ears get wet the dressings have to be changed immediately so we tear off a small piece of the tape and we tape the two halves of the cardboard together we tear off another small piece and we tape the cotton to the cardboard so it also doesn't migrate. And I leave the tape away from the bottom edge where it's rounded on the cotton, just enough overlap to hold that cotton from rolling back and forth. And then we're going to take the Zonus tape and we're going to back roll the tape across the applicator, sticky side out. When we back roll the applicator with the tape sticky side out, it makes it hold still in the ear canal better and makes the posting last longer. So I take sticky side down, I'm going to stick it to the applicator, go over the top, closing that hole so moisture can't come down that hole, and it fixes the tape to the applicator, and then we turn it backwards and roll it around the applicator overlapping the tape slightly each time all the way to the bottom and again leaving the cotton still cotton and then tear off the tape and now your post is sticky all the way around to help it fixed in the ear if 
we're going to use foam backer rod for the post, it's important to make too much post to begin with and then we can trim it to size later. Also, with the cardboard applicators, if you need a longer post, you can take two of the fatter portions of the tube and hook them together to make a longer post depending on the length of ear and age of the dog. Uh, and if you need a shorter one for a younger dog, you can trim the top. With the foam applicator, again, make sure you have enough. It's going to go down into the ear canal as well as it has to pass the top of the ear. So I'm going to pick eight inches here, for example, for making this video. And then we take the same Zonus tape, or in this instance you could use an athletic tape or something for this first stage, uh, but we're going to put a wrap around the top of this post, and if you watch my fingers, as I'm going around, I'm going to push the foam together and squeeze and compress it as I wrap it with the tape, and that's what will give it its rigid structure. So if I'm trying to correct a default, I can make it rigid in a shape to correct that ear, or I can force it to be flat and straight if I'm just doing a regular posting. So as you roll the tape around, you're going to compress that foam, and you can see the constriction isn't severe, but just enough that it's going to make it rigid. And now you've got a post that once came from curved material that's now reasonably straight. It's still flexible, so it's less irritating. It's lightweight. It's really good for a long-term post or a finishing post on a show dog. Uh, and again, we can shape it while we're taping it for any kind of correction. And then if we're doing a regular post, now we're going to go back roll over the whole rod to make it sticky side out again. and help hold it in the ear canal. Now before we bring the dog for the post, I like to make sure I have everything ready, so I have both posts made, and then I tear off six strips of tape. I do two that are about two and a half inches long. This is gonna be for the top of the post. I do two about a half inch longer than that. They're gonna be for the medium. And then I do two that are about a half inch longer than that for the base post. And this is for the average size Doberman puppy at this stage of posting. You might use more or less tape depending on what stage you're at. Um, and longer lengths for the thickness of the ear. This is Ruby Tuesday. She's going to be our model for the ear posting. Again, if we're using a foam post, you're going to measure into the bottom of the ear canal. It's important when posting that you put the ear post in as far as you can. So you put it in and kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it clear to the bottom of the ear. And then it's important to keep the ear in tension as you come up. And so after we posted this ear with a foam rod, you can see we trim right here at the top. The reason we have to keep the ear in tension is the ear is growing very fast during this period. And if it gets loose or slack in there, it's going to increase the time we're posting before that ear finally stands. And the tension actually helps the blood flow uh, and, and as long as it's just tension, we're not going to pull so hard it hurts the dog. We're just going to pull enough to help increase that blood flow. So we take our post and we put it down in the bottom of the ear canal. And twist it and back and forth until we get it all the way in there. Pull the ear up in tension and hold it against the post. And then we tape the top part of the ear first, starting from the front and rolling to the back. We always leave the tip of the ear exposed so that if there's any swelling or constriction or deadening of the tissue we can see that before it turns into a more serious problem. And then if you look real close you can see this leading edge of the ear is folded backwards into kind of an S shape of the ear. And if we forget to fold this backwards the ear is never going to look right and it's never going to stand. This leading edge of the ear is only skin, it has no cartilage in it. You can feel where the cartilage starts in the ear a little further back, and that's where you make this fold. 
And this back fold of that leading edge is the most important thing when you're posting that ear to get it to stand. As we put the tape in, it's always front side to back side to help with that back fold. And we pull the tape a little bit snug but not tight. If the tape is too tight, it'll restrict blood flow through the ear. The ear will die and fall off. So it's very important that the tape is snug but not tight. And it's important that we leave a tip exposed and a piece of tissue here so that we can see if the blood's flowing fine. And then again at the base. From front to back, all the way around. And again, because the post is sticky side out, the tape sticks to the post really well, the post sticks to the ear really well, and we get a solid structure in there. Again, with the tip exposed and a little bit of ear exposed here so we can check on the tissue. And this is how the finished post is going to look. Again, we'll take this leading edge of the ear that's skin and we'll fold it back. And so you can see that back fold in the ear and that's the most important part of this process. So take the post cotton sight down and press it in as deep in the ear canal as we can, wiggling it back and forth, pulling the ear in tension against the post to the top, and then fixing the top in place first, from the leading edge forward around, snug but not tight. You can see now the fold is being fixed in place by the first piece of tape. Next piece down, leaving a small gap. And the next piece again. And then rubbing the tape to make sure it fixes to the ear. Now sometimes the appropriate thing to do is to post without a bridge between so they learn to use their muscles to pull up their ears. If you have a dog with his ears leaning in too far when he's alert, posting like this for a couple of weeks helps the ears move out so they're straight when they're alert. If you have a dog where the ears are just staying out, then it might be appropriate to take and place a bridge between the top of the ears. to help hold that position.